week's episode of Transforming Roly, we saw Roly go into diva mode a little bit, right? We saw Roly kind of get snippy with the nurses and doctors and the people at the surgery center. And we saw her, for the first time, express frustration over her surgery and some of the results. A lot of things went down this episode, and you better believe we're going to talk about it. Welcome back to Damien After Dark. If you're new here, go ahead and click that subscribe button. That way you can get locked into all things Damien After Dark. And when I post new content, make sure you click that thumbs up button and like this video as well. That helps me get into the algorithm so more amazingly beautiful people like yourself can find me here. And we can continue growing our family, okay? Now, go ahead and get in that comment section because I would love to hear what you guys have to say about episode three of Transforming Roly and what went down on this episode. Last but not least, if you would like to support the Damien After Dark movement in the description box below will be ways that you can donate using PayPal, Cash App, Venmo, and Zelle. I'll also post my Amazon wish list for anyone that chooses to take that route. Thank you guys for supporting me. Please remember that if you leave a super chat that YouTube will take 50% of the money that you tip and donate to us creators, all right? Thank you guys again for the support, the love, the donations, subscribing, liking, commenting, all that. So let's talk about episode three of Transforming Roly, all right? There's a few things about this episode that I wanted to talk about. Uh, a few key points, and I'm going to make this video pretty quick because it's not like there was tons of things that I wanted to say regarding this episode, but there were a few. Um, and, you know, just like we normally do, we kind of work our way from the top of the episode down to the bottom. Um, and that's going to be the same with this video. So let's start from the top where we see Roly on the phone talking to her son, right? Her son has been a big topic of conversation amongst this season because we saw in the season premiere where they had Roly on the phone with her son and he was laughing at her. And I think um, they made it seem like he was laughing at her, like clowning her. And I think a lot of the viewers thought and hoped that her son was clowning her. I think a lot of the viewers thought and hoped that Roly had a bad relationship with her son. But from what we've seen so far, I don't think she does. I think Roly and her son have a great relationship. We heard her talk about you know, last on last week's episode that she had her son when she was 15 years old, and now he's 15 years old. So she's, you know, she's 30, her son's 15. She said they literally grew up together. So I think that their dynamic is a lot um, nicer and better off than we think, or than the viewers like to think, right? And I was actually impressed by her son when she was on the phone with him, because one, she asked him what he was doing. He said he was washing the dishes. I was like, a 15-year-old boy washing the dishes? Now, if it was the daughter saying, hey, mom, I'm washing the dishes, I would have been like, uh, okay. Um, I, that would be a little bit more believable. But the fact that she got a 15-year-old boy, and that's not to be sexist or anything, but y'all know, if you got a, if you got a, a, a teenage son, you already know. Boys are lazy. They're slobs, most of them. Now, I was a clean teenage boy. But a lot of these straight teenage boys, they are slob kebabs. They barely wash their nuts and they ass, much much less wash some dishes, okay? And then, you know, when they hung up the phone, he said he loved her, which that might not seem big to some people, but that seems huge to me because not I've noticed not everybody says I love you to their parents. Some people don't have that kind of relationship. Some people just didn't grow up doing that. There wasn't a lot of love in the home. So the fact that they're simply saying I love you to one another when they hang up the phone, to me, it seems like they have a nice relationship. You know what I'm saying? Um, We see her health coach, Dushinko, come over. And, you know, he's talking to Roly about the whole alkaline diet. Because we talked about how her health coach is actually a relative of Dr. Sebi. And Dr. Sebi is the one, um, the world-renowned herbalist that, um, the doctor, whatever you're going to call him, who... Um, who came up with this alkaline diet that is supposed to allegedly cure um, disease, cure infection, cure cancer, cure HIV, AIDS, things like that. And they, you know, the word on the curb is that they offed Dr. Sebi because, um, or they didn't want, they didn't want his practices to get out because it wouldn't be, it would not benefit the big pharmaceutical companies who are making billions and millions off of drugs, right? 
Anyway, the health coach comes over. He talks to her about this alkaline diet. Now, I've actually been interested in an alkaline diet before. I've never gone through with it. I've never tried it um, because I think it's very expensive to do. And it's very, um, like, it's very, it's like down to a T in a science. You got to, you, know like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. I feel like you'd have to have a health coach like this Dashinko guy to really get on track to doing an alkaline diet. It's, you can't just wake up and do one because there's specific foods that you have to eat. Um, but yeah, like, I think the thing is, like, the foods that we eat every day, fast food, sugars, all that, I think that infection and diseases like cancer, like HIV, like um, diabetes, like all that, I think all that feeds off of the bad foods we eat. So when we eat McDonald's, when we eat cookies and sugars and all this bad shit, cancer and stuff like that feeds off of it. Where an alkaline diet, the, the, the infection and diseases can't feed off of that. So it's easier to rid that of your body, if that makes sense. Um, not that I, not saying that I have any kind of sickness, diseases, cancer, HIV, anything like that. I'm, I mainly wanted to do an alkaline diet to just cleanse my body of all the terrible foods I've eaten over the years, right? Because my diet's horrible, y'all. Like, living in the South, if you know, you know, there's fast food on every fucking corner. And um, I really want to change my diet. But anyway, one of the things I noticed that Roly said, the, uh, the, the health coach brought up, you know, how do you feel about going to the gym? And Roly gave him a look real quick, like, that's not on the agenda. <laughs> and, um... You know, she says she has a gym membership for three months, but she hasn't gone. And I'm like, Roly, sis, that's the first step to anything that you don't want to do. The first step to anything that you don't want to do is simply doing it, right? I find myself procrastinating all the time to do things that I don't want to do. And I'm like, Damien, just make the first fucking step. Make the first step. And then the, the last nine, ten steps are easy once you make the first step. Now, I don't know if it's, you know, Rolly got a chemical pill at her plastic surgeon's office. I didn't know that you can go get a BBL and a chemical pill at the same place. I thought she had to be a, a plastic surgeon and then an esthetician. I don't know. Maybe her doctor has an esthetician's license too, but I don't know if it's the, the, the chemical pill that Rolly got, but her skin, because I know when you get a chemical pill, your skin starts to like shed and look really bad, but her skin was so oily, like you could see the sun glistening off her skin you could see lights glistening off her skin and i'm just like is that from a chemical peel or is Rolly's skin just really really oily is it oily from the surgery i don't know um now the health coach asked Rolly about you know he says how do you feel about doing a 21 day green juice fast because he made this green juice for her and she said you know oh i like it it tasted good and he asked her how she felt about doing a 21-day fast, meaning she could drink and eat nothing but that green juice for 21 days. Bitch, that sounds miserable as fuck. <laughs> um, which I know, you know, there's health benefits to that. But he says that most people that do this green juice fast lose 5 to 15 pounds a week. And that was just like a red flag to me. That doesn't sound very healthy. Um, you now, I know people fast all the time, but... 21 days of like no protein, no, no, just green juice. And maybe there's protein in the green juice. I don't know. But five to 15 pounds a week, that's a lot of weight to lose in a week. It just doesn't sound healthy. I don't know. I'm not a doctor, but it don't sound healthy to me. Don't most people lose like five pounds in a month? In a few weeks, not a week. 15 pounds in a week? That's a lot of weight to lose. That's like 60 pounds in a month. I don't know. Maybe, I maybe I don't know. Now, when Roly and the health coach started chopping up those vegetables and the alkaline ceviche, and, you know, they put it in the, they, they, they boiled it or whatever they did to it, and they had it with the asparagus, the cooked asparagus. Listen, now that looked good. And when she tried it, she said it was good. See, that's why I wish I had like the access to someone who could come and show me these different recipes and make it for me and bring me the ingredients and all that. 
And that's why I say these types of diets cost money. Like you have to have money to be able to do these types of diets and get access to these type of health coaches and stuff like that. And some people might say, oh, no, you don't. But an average person can't afford a health coach to come to their house and bring vegetables and chop up food and show them recipes and things like that. Right. Um. Now, Rolly had a, has a has a, an IV hydration nurse come over and a masseuse come over to massage her. You know, apparently when you get these type of surgeries done, it's good to get massages to help drain the fluids and, you know, can help you heal faster. A, um, a big part of these surgeries is the healing process. Um, but one of the things I noticed is that Rolly is laying on her back, like she's laying on her ass. And I think they told her not to sit or lay on her back for six weeks. Now, unless it's been six weeks in between episode one and two or one and three, I don't know. Now, you know what I noticed about the lady that came in to do the IV hydration and the lady that came in to do the massage, the two ladies that came in at the same time? How are they? Those two ladies, I don't even think have doctorate degrees or whatever, but those two ladies came in and they were more professional than those doctors at Goals Plastic Surgery. Like I was just watching the ladies that came in and it's like, you know, they were way more professional. They had a, 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 an amazing bedside manner, the way that they handled Roly and were just gentle with her and talked her through it. And, you know, it wasn't like, are you okay? Are you good? Back in her back. You know what I'm saying? You know, it, it, they were informative. They were just, I don't know. Like, I, I something about those doctors that goals plastic surgery, it just gives horror movie to me. Horror movie. I need to get my, y'all know when I get up here, y'all, I say it every time. I get up here and I start talking to y'all. And my mouth gets so fucking dry. And then my camera's kind of off. So I'm trying to fix that. Okay, I think that's better. Is it straight? I feel like it's like a little crooked. Maybe that's better. Okay, just one second, y'all. I'm going to grab my sweet tea because I'm like really thirsty right now. I get up, I don't know what it is. When I get up here and I start talking, I get so fucking thirsty. Now, was it just me? This is no shade, okay? But was it just me or did Rolly's booking manager, Raina, does she have a five o'clock shadow going on? There was a, there was that scene when Raina showed up to ho Rolly's hotel room. And she walked in. And you know these loose cameras be HD, crystal clear, boom, right in on you. And it looked like, Raina looked like she had more hair on her face than me. And listen, that's why I say no shade. Because I know, we, you know, people have educated me here on the channel about PCOS, about things like that. Women grow facial hair. It's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a fact of life. It's a part of life. People grow hair is not specific to men, right? Women grow hair on their arms. They grow hair on their underarms. They grow it on their legs. Some even grow it on their face. But Raina, baby, you was giving straight up what I got going on right now. Very noticeable. Now, just like I've said before, with a lot of Zeus shows... This show is no different. There's a lot of filler, you know? We've seen three episodes, and there we really haven't got much of nothing other than Roly on an operating table getting her ass cut open. But, for example, we watched a scene for about five minutes of Roly looking for her Gucci glasses. She's getting ready to head to the airport. She's like, I'm not leaving until I find my Gucci glasses. So we, we have to watch her walk around the room looking for her. To, why? That should have been cut out. We don't need to see Rolly look for her Gucci. We don't give a fuck. Like, y'all need to find a story to follow and stick to it. You know what I'm saying? 
like Rolly's friend Julia. We were introduced to Rolly's friend Julia this episode. Why has Julia... Julia should have been a main cast member. Julia should have been a cast member on this show alongside Rolly's journey because we need more people alongside Rolly for this show. You can't give somebody a show and only follow them. It's going to be boring, right? You need side characters. You need people to come in um, and, and be more involved. You know, that's why you might see Raina every now and then. That's why they brought in Big Sexy. That's why you, we're going we're gonna to see E.T. later on in, in the season. You know, they've got to have more people go come in to make the story flow because we can't just see Roly talk to herself. Um, so... Before we get into Julia, before we get into the friend, the Rolly's health coach was talking to her about her food choices, right? Um, because, and listen, I eat horrible. I can't say shit, but I'm also not having weight loss surgery, obviously, with this looking like a stick over here. But when you're trying, when, when you go through weight loss surgery, I have, a, I have a friend who got a BBL. I have a friend who got a tummy tuck and all that. When you go through that, they tell you, you can't go back to eating the same way you were eating or all that weight is going to just come right back. And so Rolly is getting these surgeries done and eating Waffle House and fried foods and, and fast food and shit. And listen, I love me some Waffle House. I love me a motherfucking uh, uh, bacon cheesesteak melt. From, from Waffle House, right? I love me a McDouble from McDonald's. I'm I'm not ripping her for eating healthy, but I just don't... Like, it would suck to go through all this surgery only to blow right back up. It's not only changing your, your body physically, it's changing your mind mentally and the way that you eat and your, and your eating patterns, right? Your eating habits. Now, Julia, as I was talking about earlier, everybody needs a friend like Julia. Rolly's friend Julia on this show. She's another plus-sized girl. I like that Julia don't give a fuck what nobody thinks about her body. She dresses sexy. I like that, you know, she had that, that, that pink sparkly dress on with her pumps. And she don't care how big her belly is, baby. She gonna flaunt it. And she's confident. And she's sexy. And Miss Julia, I'm here for. I'm here for Julia. Um, because she had a fun, light spirit about her. And she was supporting Rolly. She was uplifting Rolly. She was right there by Rolly's side. She was holding her hand. She was saying, you got this, girl. You're gonna look snatched. You're gonna have a hot girl summer. That ass is assing. You know, she walked Rolly to the bed. She tucked her into bed. Made sure she had her medicine. Watched over her. Was anti answering her phone, was answering the door for her. Everybody needs a friend like Julia. So, Rolly goes to her 16th doctor's appointment. At this point, we've seen her go to the doctor back and forth so much. I don't even know what time this is. I don't know why she's going. We just see her go lay on a table every time and they stick rods in and out of her body. Which I guess, I finally have come to the conclusion that those rods that they're sticking in and out of her body is sucking fat. I didn't know that. I didn't, I didn't know what they were doing. But it makes sense now. Like, they, the, 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 big, the, the big stick they poke in your body, I guess it's just like <laughs> sucking the fat out. I didn't know he had technology like that. I thought they just cut you open and took the fat and sewed you back up. I didn't know something sucked it out. But what I will say is this is the first time in this series, in the three episodes we've watched, to where the doctors came in and had PPE on, had their surgical mask on, had their gowns on, had their gloves on. They were washing their hands. Rolly's friend, Julia, that came in, she put on a gown, she put on a mask. Why are y'all just now doing this? It's, it's like somebody watched watched our, our 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 recaps and then they said let's go back and refilm the show because we look crazy i don't know but it's just like if y'all remember on episode one and two nobody was wearing masks really her friends and the the nurse's assistant was coming in no mask no gloves street clothes on cameramen in there with street clothes on nobody was taking it serious this girl got you know open wounds where they're cutting her open and shit and the, it, there could easily be germs and diseases and infection all in the air <laughs> 
I don't know. Just this time seemed more sterile to me. Did anybody else feel that way? My head's itching. You're awesome. Don't pay me no mind. Um, did anybody else feel that way? It's it's she's it, it seemed a lot more st sterile this time. Um. Oh my gosh. Why my head is itching? It's right there. So bad. Um. Now, mind you, Rolly is wide awake, lying on the table with this huge rod in her lower back, upper ass, okay? Y'all know where I'm... She literally has a rod, like, right here that they stuck down into her. And she's, like, laying on the table going, oh, oh! Oh, oh my God. Oh my fucking God. Stop. No, no, no fucking way. Hell the fuck no. And I was just like, I felt it. I felt the pain watching from home. I'm like, oh my God. Ow. Ooh, ooh. Ah, how is she doing this? Bitch, I had chills. I'm like, how are you doing this? How are you physically going through this? How are you physically dealing with this pain? It's giving horror movie. There's no fucking way. I would rather wake up every single day and walk and sweat and exercise and be out of breath and do it the hard way than lay on a bat. And, and I'm not judging Rolly for the way she did it. This is just me personally. Then have to lay on a surgical table wide awake and be cut open and sliced open and... No. Mm -mm. No. And you know, I said under back to Julia again. The reason why I like Julia too is you can tell she's Roly's real friend because she called Roly Gia, not Roly. She called her Gia. I'm like, okay, this girl has known her for a while. They probably go back. They're friends. We even heard them talk about how they used to be plus size strippers together. Um, so I'm like, yeah, we ought to bring Julia in as a full time cast member. Let her come along the come come along the journey as Roly gets her body done, and that way, you know, the show can be more entertaining. Julia can make her a little bag, and you know, it looks like it looks like we'll be seeing more of her because we see in the sneak peek for the upcoming weeks. The show is less about Roly's surgery, and we see more of her friends. We see more of her family, um, and things like that. Now. Here is where Roly loses me, and I'm sure y'all even y'all know where I'm about to go with this because we see her go to her next doctor's appointment, and she gets to the back. You know how when you go to surgery, they have those curtains and they pull the curtains back, and you know you get undressed and all that. So she's back there, and she's um, you know, back behind the curtains, getting undressed, and she starts complaining saying, you know, um, they should have the influencers come in on one side of the building and have their own separate wing um, from the regular people. This is what she said, y'all. She said that, that, that they should have the influencers coming in on one side of the building and regular people on the other side of the building. She doesn't, she shouldn't have to be in here with the regular people. She shouldn't be in the same operating room as the regular people. She's an influencer. She kept bringing up that she was an influencer. I'm like, Roly, have you lost your motherfucking mind, sis? Now, see, this, I'm just confused because I'm like, what do you think this is? And who do you think you are? Beyonce, bitch? Like, you you talking about you, you, you need to be away from the regular people. You are a regular person. You think those doctors know who the fuck you are, Rolly? <laughs> those doctors don't know you from Adam, sis. Those doctors ain't watching Zeus Network. They don't give a fuck. They just know that you're an influencer with a little bit of money and they won't take advantage of you. And get you to promote their shit so they can keep lining their pockets. And they're going to move on to the next influencer that they've never heard of. I don't know. That just shocked me because. This is why all those people signed that petition, Roly. 
A lot of people feel like that you think you're better now. They think that because you got a little bit of change and you went and got a bag and fixed your teeth, like Cardi B said, and now you're trying to get your shape together, that you're better. Regular people, you can't. It was just mind blowing to me. Like, bitch, you are not Beyonce to say, I need my own separate wing in a, in a, in a cosmetic surgeon's office. Like, what? No, we're not going to give you special. And then the way she was acting in that surgeon's office, her energy, her attitude was so stank. The way she was talking to everybody, this is so unprofessional. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, it's like you, you claim you're an influencer and everybody else is regular people, but aren't you allegedly still getting food stamps, Rolly? Don't you still live in the same home you lived in before you got famous? This little shack. I don't mean to say shack. Because a home is a home, and I'm no better than nobody, bitch. I would live in a, listen, I don't, if I got a, if it's got a roof on it, it ain't leaking, if I got air, I'll live in it, bitch. I'm not above it. I'll live in a trailer. I'll live in a motherfucking um, apartment. I don't care. But Roly, I have a problem when you try acting high, mighty, better than, when you really ain't living no better than a lot of rest of us. Because let's face it, she didn't pay for this surgery. It was, you know, you post about us, you let us let us do your surgery, we get promo off of you. Uh, that just shocked me that she acted like that. She says, I'm not going to do any more surgeries with these people ever again. She starts complaining about her surgery results. And she's saying that her back is attached to her ass. She says that her back is attached to her ass and that they were supposed to correct certain things, but they didn't. Now, see, this is where we go into the plastic surgeon's office suing Zeus and Roly. Because remember, we did a video here, y'all, and I told y'all that Roly allegedly started complaining about her, her surgery results online and that the plastic surgeon's office got wind of it. And that when they saw the episode play and the show advertising and the trailer dropping, they issued a lawsuit because they said, this is not what we promised. Zeus told us they would represent us in a positive light. They didn't say they were going to show our name. They didn't say they were going to show Gold's Plastic Surgery's um, logo. So, you know, they're now allegedly suing Zeus and Roly. And Roly, we see her on the show being unsatisfied with her results now granted from what i've seen so far her body looks great but allegedly goals plastic surgery has given some people unflattering results before to where they look deformed misshaped you know botched chopped screwed allegedly that's just what they be saying that's just what the pictures be looking like i don't know now, Rolly's upset. You know, she's got this attitude. Um, I think she's mad at her results. I think she's mad that they didn't give her a private wing in the in the surgeon's office. Girl, bye. Um, I don't even think Beyonce would have acted like that. I don't think Rihanna would have acted like that. Like, who are you, Gia, to be acting like that? Um, I don't know. Her, her energy's just off, right? And then, you know, they give her the Faha, which is like the compression suit that you wear when you get these surgeries. And she can't fit into the Faha, so that pisses her off too. And, you know, she goes to the doctor and tells him, this is very ghetto. This is very unprofessional. I'm an influencer, and my name holds weight. Don't play with me. And it's like, girl, what happened to you, Roly? Stop and please stop with the I'm an influencer. What does it notice how she does notice how she don't say she's a celebrity? Notice how she says influencer. At least she she kept it cute and kept it right. But Roly, please, an influencer? Everybody's a fucking influencer at this point. I can say I'm an influencer. I get paid for sharing my opinion online. I get paid for sharing products online. I'm an influencer too. When I go to the fucking hospital, should they give me a separate wing and treat me like I'm motherfucking Big Mama Don? No, bitch. I'm a regular citizen just like you. The only time I could see a hospital giving somebody like a separate room 
or allowing them to come in the back and all that and that is if you're like a super high profile figure like a Rihanna, like a Beyonce, someone that couldn't walk into a hospital without being mobbed by fans, right? Roly, you can walk in anywhere and you might have one or two people who's going to say, oh, hey, Roly, or can I get a picture? But people are not going to mob you. You look like a lot of girls in my town, Roly. No shade. I see girls like you all the time. Now, I'm surprised that the next episode that we see E.T. is in town. I didn't know. Got something in my tooth, bitch. What? Hold on, y'all. I can't be up here on camera. Even though the video is almost done. I can't believe I've been filming this whole time. And I got some shit in my teeth. And y'all ain't even tell me. In my little magic bag, bitch, I got everything, okay? If you know me, you'll know I carry a bag everywhere. And I always got what I need. That's gross. I'm sorry y'all had to see me floss on camera. But better that than to be just up here looking a fool, right? Um... So yeah, I'm surprised to see that E.T.'s in town. I didn't know that her and Rolly were still friends after the whole baddies reunion, but maybe, I don't know. We'll have to watch and see what happens. Maybe they'll talk about that. Um, we're going to see a lot of Rolly's friends from Vegas, where she's from, a lot of her BBW friends, her her fuller-figured women friends. They're, you know, they're going to come over. Looks like they're going to have a BBW strip-off. Looks like we're going to get to see Rolly's mother and her son, see a, you know some conversations with them. It looks like the rest of the season is going to be a lot more promising than these first three episodes. I want to see more of Rolly's life. I want to see her family, her friends, her home, her all that. I don't want to see the surgery anymore. Okay? Y'all have already wasted three episodes. I don't want to see any more. Now, I ask for you at home. Get in the comment section below and let me know what you think about episode three. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and like this video. That helps me get into the algorithm. And if you want to donate to the Damien After Dark movement to help us grow and expand, in the description box below will be ways that you can donate using PayPal, Cash App, Venmo, and Zelle. I'll also post my Amazon wish list for those who choose to take that route. Thank you guys so much for watching, supporting, liking my videos, being here. Your presence means everything to me. Make sure you always wake up and put your best foot forward. Follow your dreams. Don't take no for an answer. Love yourself and put yourself first over that man, over that woman that's driving you crazy. Always put yourself first. You promise? Promise? You better. You better. All right. Love you guys so much. And we'll see you next time on Damien After Dark. See ya.